When you're studying the inverse trig functions, you might come across a problem like this. Evaluate tangent of inverse sine of four-fifths. Notice these are, not, these are not inverses of one another, so you can't use the inverse identities here. So what I suggest you do is you make a little substitution. Let's call this, and remember, inverse trig functions will give you an angle. Their output is always going to be an angle. Let's call this alpha. In math, we have a tendency to label angles with Greek letters, so let's call it alpha. And I'm going to draw alpha on the unit circle in a second. Let me just uh, use the uh, definition of inverse sine to figure out what kind of an angle alpha is. Remember the definition of inverse sine. y equals inverse sine of x means x equals sine y for y between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So alpha equals inverse sine of 4 fifths means sine of alpha equals 4 fifths. And alpha is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And that suggests that alpha is going to be in the first quadrant because we have a positive value. So let me draw alpha like this. So I've drawn alpha in the first quadrant. The sine value is 4 fifths. And in order to solve this problem, I'm going to have to figure out what the x-coordinate would be. But remember, this is a point in the unit circle. And on the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So in this case, we'd have x squared plus 4 fifths squared equals 1. Or x squared plus 16 over 25 equals, and I'll change this to 25 over 25. And then I subtract 16 over 25 from both sides, and I get x squared equals 9 over 25. So x is going to be plus or minus 3 over 5. Now, which is it? Well, we're in the first quadrant. x has got to be positive. So x is 3 fifths. Now, that doesn't exactly help me figure out what the tangent of alpha is, because remember, that's what we're looking for, the tangent of this angle alpha. If I were looking for the cosine of alpha, I'd be done. It would be 3 fifths. But remember that the tangent of alpha is the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So the tangent of alpha is going to be the y-coordinate of 4 fifths divided by the x-coordinate of 3 fifths. And that's going to give me 4 thirds. And that's it. So always make a substitution like this. Let's see another example. Sine of arc cosine of negative 2 thirds. Remember that arc cosine is the same as inverse cosine. So sine of arc cosine of 2 thirds. This is going to be another angle. Let me call it beta. And I should plot beta in a second. But first, let's figure out what kind of an angle beta is. Remember that beta equals inverse cosine of negative 2 thirds means the cosine of beta equals negative 2 thirds. And beta is between 0 and pi. Remember that that's, uh, that's going to be the range of inverse cosine. So if I draw beta on this um, unit circle, I've got to draw beta between 0 and pi, somewhere up here. Now, where would the cosine be negative? Remember that cosine comes from the first coordinate of the point on the unit circle. It's going to be somewhere in this quadrant. So let me pick a point where it looks like the x coordinates negative 2 thirds. How about there? Negative 2 thirds, comma, something. And this would be my angle. Now all I have to do is figure out what the y coordinate is. Well, I still have the fact that x squared plus y squared equals 1. And I can plug in negative 2 thirds for x. Now negative 2 thirds squared is 4 over 9. And I can change the 1 to 9 over 9. And, the, and thus, if I subtract both sides, uh, 4 ninths from both sides, I get y squared equals 5 over 9. 
and y equals plus or minus root 5 over 3. And you can tell that since we're in the second quadrant, the y coordinate's going to be positive. So I should choose y equals plus root 5 over 3. Now I'm looking for the sine of beta. The sine of beta is exactly the y value. So I've got my answer, sine of beta, which is root 5 over 3. And I'm done. Don't forget this trick of renaming the arc cosine or the, the inverse trigonometric function value because they always give you angles. You can plot that angle on the unit circle, figure out what both coordinates are, and then use that to find the sine, cosine, or tangent of the result.